noisy, and dangerous. There are countless legends about what lies beneath these streets. You have never heard screams come from a man in your entire life, the way those, that guy screamed that day. Every New Yorker has heard the reports of beasts lurking in the city sewers. The weirdest thing that we find is um, human remains. Now, Monster Quest goes deep underground. What is that that we hear back there? In search of New York's sewer gators. What is that moving in there? Oh, look at that. That's a nest. Witnesses around the world report seeing monsters. Are they real or imaginary? Science searches for answers. On Monster Quest. It's the biggest city in America, known as the crossroads of the world. Manhattan is home to some of the world's most iconic urban vistas. But there is another part of New York that few see, but is even more impressive. The city sewer system is made up of 11,000 miles of intricate pipeworks. The sewer is a marvel of modern engineering and was originally built over 150 years ago. The city spends over $260 million a year to keep it functioning. This subterranean world is also the birthplace of urban legends. And the most famous of all is that of the sewer gator. Uh, this has been an ongoing phenomena since the 1930s. If you see them in a dead end and you're heading towards a dead end, your best bet is don't go any further. My God, what if I had walked into the kitchen in the dark to get a glass of water? That could have been, I mean, it could have been killed. I was uh, attacked by an alligator with no warning whatsoever and crystal clear water. Eyewitnesses describe alligators 14 feet long and weighing over a thousand pounds. This apex predator's powerful jaws can crush bones. This resilient monster is known to thrive in the world's most inhospitable areas. The New York City sewage system, which processes nine million gallons of waste weekly, would fit that description. Most residents think gators in the sewer system are a myth, but the legend is based on historical facts. Alligators in the sewer is definitely a true story. Cryptozoologist Lauren Coleman has been studying this phenomena for 25 years. In 1935, for instance, the New York Times published an article, a rather long article, talking about a group of uh, boys who had, with shovels, found that they were able to pull an alligator out of a sewer. Three Harlem teenagers were shoveling snow into a manhole when one of them saw something large swimming in the waters below. They managed to pull an eight-foot alligator out of the sewer drain using a clothesline. When the animals snapped its huge jaws at them, the frightened boys beat it to death with their shovels. It was not the first gator found in New York. Reports had been coming in for several years, but the eight-foot rogue was the biggest ever recorded at that time. Boss, I'm telling you, there's an alligator down there about 12 foot long. By 1935, the reports to New York's superintendent of sewers finally reached a level that had to be addressed. Teddy May was the man in charge of the department. His workers were saying they were seeing alligators in the sewers. He didn't believe them. Boss, I hadn't been drinking. I swear to God, there's an alligator out there. He thought they were drinking whiskey and really playing games on it. May decided to check for himself. He wanted to prove that his workers had been up to no good. But when he did find several alligators, he vowed to do something about it. Boys were gonna have to do something. He sent crews of his people into the sewers with rifles and he killed some of these alligators. Yeah, I told you we'd get them. I told you. Despite May's efforts, the reports of alligators persisted. <laughs> I think it would be pretty difficult for it to survive down there. 
Jason Simonelli is a district supervisor with the Department of Environmental Protection. He's been overseeing parts of the New York sewers for the last 20 years. Okay, there's a lot of dangerous gases down there that could knock you unconscious. It's all discharged from houses. It's very warm. It's, it's dark, wet. It's not, you know, nothing uh, you want to be the, staying in too long. The department, which is responsible for the sewage system, denies there's any truth to the legend. An alligator living in a sewer? You know, I, I, you know, I've never seen one, and I've been looked in plenty. What we're finding from the, the Department of Sewers in New York nowadays is that all reports that are coming in are silenced. It's really unknown why the Department of Environment puts the clamps on these reports. The speculation is really in two areas. One, that they're highly embarrassed that there are alligators in the sewer, and two, that they're afraid that the citizens of New York City will be scared to death, that there are actually alligators beneath their feet. It's easy to believe that sewers would be far too polluted to support a population of anything except rats or roaches, until you talk to this man. Oh, I don't think there's any doubt that alligators could survive in a sewer in a, in a big city like New York. Those are actually pretty hospitable places for alligators. Dr. Kent Vliet is coordinator of biological sciences at the University of Florida. These animals really have, uh, have quite an amazing ability to fight off disease and fight off infection. And the proteins within their body are capable of killing bacteria, capable of killing viruses, capable of killing amoebas. So all of these microbes that cause disease in many groups of or organisms have a, a great difficulty in, in creating disease in crocodilians. It's a really resilient group of organisms. A large city sewage system might not be the most natural place to find alligators, but they have been found in them before. This video was shot in New Orleans. This eight-foot alligator escaped Hurricane Katrina by hiding in the sewers. The animal was found by sewer workers several weeks later in apparent good health. While it is not known how this alligator got into the sewers, this expert is not at all surprised. I've personally have seen alligators survive in really nasty conditions. Dr. Ken Crisco is a herpetologist with the Florida Museum of Natural History. Alligators are quite resilient, and I believe that they can really tolerate quite a, well, quite a bit of different contaminants and different types of uh, environmental conditions. MonsterQuest will mount an expedition in search of evidence of these elusive gators below the streets of New York City. The team will deploy a unique set of robotic cameras for the search. And this camera has a very sophisticated uh, zoom. Looks like an eye shine. They'll also employ an audio baiting system to try to draw out these reptiles. We have uh, baby alligators on here. The team will evaluate whether the sewer system is a viable habitat for alligators. And we'll look at how big of a threat gators in the sewers would be. If they're opportunistic feeders, they'll feed on anything and everything. Uh, no, no, no. And finally, no. Monster Quest will travel to Florida to investigate how these prehistoric monsters might have adapted to such an unnatural environment. Alligator can survive in total darkness. He actually will grow a lot faster in total darkness. The expedition starts in New York with Dr. Ken Crisco teaming up with an underground expert. Plan tonight is to go look for some alligators in the sewers of New York. Moses Gates, an urban planner, is also a renowned New York City underground explorer. He's been venturing into the city sewers for 10 years and knows the dangers involved. Well, you definitely have to have an air meter with you. You have to monitor your oxygen. You have to monitor uh, any other toxic gases that may be the result of being in a sewer inside of the combined system. Dr. Crisco, Moses Gates, and Munster Quest cameras are ready to enter the sewers. For security reasons, the team was not allowed to film their entry point to this very secure and well-protected area. I think this is actually a good place to set up this um, sound recorder. 
The mission tonight is to set up the monitoring equipment. So what we're gonna do here is set up this thing. And this actually is, is recorded. We have uh, baby alligators on here. And hopefully this will attract anything that's in the vicinity. The male alligator is known to eat its young, so they'll be drawn to the quick and easy meal. The female gator would respond maternally with an instinct to protect. Okay, I'm just gonna set it like that. The team also installs an infrared motion activated camera to capture any activity. And there it goes. So there you go. Now I'm just gonna set it down, and I'm gonna face it the other way there. While no alligators have been recovered from the Manhattan sewer system recently, quite a few have been found in and around the Big Apple. Over the last 10 years, we've picked up uh, about five to six gators uh, each year. That's, that's sort of a spike compared to the previous five to 10 years. New York City is sort of like a crossroads of a lot of people and come from every country on the planet, so we're bound to come across some exotic pets. The team's audio baiting system and camera systems are in place, 20 feet below the streets of Manhattan. Dr. Crisco leads the team to the borough of Queens to meet up with the New York City Pipe Inspection Squad. They're equipped with some cutting edge hardware. This camera can go up to 400 inch pipe uh, sewer lines. Uh, we have extra lights because it's very, very dark in there. Also, this head can turn uh, 360 degrees. Uh, and also can go up and down in case of uh, uh, water, if we have water inside a sewer. The camera they use was originally designed for surgery and internal medical examinations. It provides high quality pictures and can monitor humidity and ambient temperature. The camera is mounted on a remote operated vehicle called the Mudmaster. With its eight high traction wheels, it can get through some of the toughest terrain that the sewers can offer. The team is searching for secondary evidence or proof that gators could survive here. Nests, sufficient food sources, and adequate environmental conditions. The expedition has barely started when something looks promising around the corner. What is that moving in there? New York City, steeped in legend and myth. For decades, rumors have circulated about alligators living and breeding inside the city sewers. Now, Monster Quest has journeyed to the city that never sleeps to investigate this urban legend. Alligators and their biological ancestors have been around for over 200 million years. They have survived several extinctions and even the last ice age. While gators in New York are thought to be a myth, in Florida they deal with these terrifying beasts regularly. Gators attack an estimated 20 people in the state yearly. I was uh, attacked by an alligator with no warning whatsoever in crystal clear water, and it had come from behind, which was the scariest part. It was 3.30 in the afternoon, a uh, pleasant day, one, one of the busier days in the park, full of people, lifeguards at various stations that I could trust and see. Michael Diaz was swimming in a stream just a few blocks from his home outside of Apopka, Florida. And then, without a word of a lie, something came up my back. I felt something punch me in the back of the head. And so I was pushed underwater by this thing. I zoom was a person. While underwater, I turned around underwater and looked up and I saw bubbles splashing, a white belly of a gator, and then I just panicked, I freaked out. And being waist deep water, I just stripped the water, ripped up my back and started swinging and punching at the gator, trying to defend my life and make sure I wasn't bitten anymore. I just didn't want to be bitten anymore. Diaz managed to fight off the six foot alligator, but the damage was done. They gave me uh, 33 staples for all the different uh, bites and uh, stabbing wounds I got. <laughs> Monster Quest's expedition team has partnered with the New York Pipe Inspection Company. 
They'll be checking the sewers of New York City for evidence of gators. Team leader Dr. Ken Crisco has decided to explore a main combined sewer drain that's running parallel to a small lake in Queens. Certainly an alligator would have no problem at all living around here. When you have cover, you have a lot of vegetation, you have obviously a lot of birds as a potential food source. There could be one out here right now basking because it's nice and sunny this morning. Mainly we see water bugs, we see rats, we see uh, raccoons sometimes, and they also attack the camera, which is very funny. The sewer inspection team, led by Foreman Pini Alon, is always on the lookout for the unexpected. The weirdest thing that we find is um, human remains, and uh, at the beginning it's very shocking. And um, in that case, we, uh, we need to call the police, and they come here, and uh, basically they uh, take over. The New York sewage system is extremely complex. The city's first underground sewer goes back to the 17th century, when the Dutch built a channel down the middle of Broad Street and decked it over. As the city grew, so did the sewer system. Of course, they were building like crazy downtown. Frank Desposito spent 50 years working in the sewers. Nobody knows its history better. And those were the worst sewers in the world. The lower battery part, there's still wooden sewers down there, right? At least there was when I was there. And we had carpenters that used to go in and repair those sewers. And the, and the, only, the oldest sewers in the city are well, in the lower part of Manhattan. So if you didn't do the job right, those sewers could crumble up on you. And you didn't want that to happen. New York is equipped with a state-of-the-art combined storm sewer system. It contains more than 11,000 miles of pipes and drains that carry over a billion gallons of wastewater every day. When New York is flush or turn on a faucet, the water flows through four inch pipes that lead to 36 inch main pipes. And these connect to combined sewer and storm drains that flow to treatment plants. If they were placed end to end, the pipes and drains would stretch from Times Square to Australia. The team lowers a remote-controlled vehicle with a camera attached into the sewer. It is linked by cable to a computer inside the truck. It can go up to a thousand feet in any direction. We have some good de debris down there. Um, I haven't seen any potential food or anything. The robot cam is equipped with seven powerful lights, giving the sensitive camera enough light to be able to capture high-quality video footage in an otherwise pitch-black environment. What's the width of, of the sewer system here? Well, I was down there 15 feet. 15 feet, wow, it's really big then. You see there's quite a few insects in front of the lens. Small alligators will snap them up. The fact that no natural light reaches the sewers might pose problems. It has been said that alligators wouldn't be able to survive without direct sunlight. But Dr. Vliet disagrees. Unlike most other reptiles, alligators don't need sun, sunlight for vitamin production, for vitamin D and, and ultimately E, which is important in reproduction. And so if they're getting those vitamins through their typical food sources, they, 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 they don't need sunlight. Yes, an alligator can survive in total darkness. He actually will grow a lot faster in total darkness. Rick Kramer and Corey Burlew are state licensed alligator trappers in West Palm Beach, Florida. The two men estimate they catch over 500 alligators each year. Most of the gators here have lost their natural fear of man and have been declared a threat to humans. This gator has been roaming near this large grocery store, coming closer and closer to the unsuspecting shoppers. This happens frequently when alligators are found in densely populated areas. Kramer and Burlew cast lines over the animal, hook it, and drag it to shore. Burlew steps knee-deep in the water, inches from the predator 
and his snapping jaws. He manages to get a rope around the gator's neck. seconds or less? <laughs> That's what you're doing. During his 14-year career, Kramer has seen alligators everywhere. He'll be scratching at front doors. I mean, they got pictures of a gator in Wellington. He's looks like he's trying to ring the doorbell. My God, what if I had walked into the kitchen in the dark to get a glass of water? That could have been, I mean, it could have been killed. Sandy Frosty knows what it's like to find a gator in an unexpected place. I came home one evening, and I was here about an hour or so, and all of a sudden I heard a loud noise in the kitchen. I knew it was too loud, it couldn't be the cat, so I got up and went into the kitchen. <gasps> and there was an eight and a half foot alligator in my kitchen. So I turned around and Went back to my bedroom and closed the door and called 911. This is Mrs. Frosty. What's going on? There's an alligator in my kitchen. Of course, they didn't believe me when I said there was an alligator. The lady on the phone said, are you sure it's not an iguana? And I said, oh, no, 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 no. The gator got inside by breaking through a screen door. He was apparently trying to get at Poe, the family cat. Sandy is lucky. A mature alligator this size could easily have killed her. I've seen a gator break loose one time, and he was about a 10-foot alligator, and none of his tail touched the ground when he was going after it. And it's enough to scare you, I can tell you that. You don't want something like that coming at you. An alligator at full speed can travel 27 miles per hour. That combined with an average weight of 450 pounds makes for a dangerous predator. The Monster Quest team, led by Dr. Crisco, has moved to another location in New York. Water's flowing much quicker here. They've sent the robot cam into a smaller 36-inch diameter pipe. And it may lead to a dramatic find. Something right there on the right. Monster Quest is in New York City to investigate one of its oldest urban legends, finding out whether alligators live in the sewers beneath these streets. The legend began as fact in 1935, when three Harlem teenagers found a gator in the sewer. Ever since, there have been reports of alligators. How old is this one? Uh, this animal here probably is about six years old or so. <laughs> and I think he's ready. Some people have suggested that light-deprived sewer gators may have produced a blind albino strand over the years. Albinism is a genetic trait. I don't think there's any biological reason to expect them to turn white in darkness after a few generations. If blind albino gators are not the result of light deprivation, they are perfect test subjects to see how alligators would fare in total darkness. These animals can, uh, can sense things moving in the water, uh, in the dark. Florida State University biologist Greg Erickson has been studying alligators for over 20 years. Uh, they've got uh, a lot of uh, dome sensors on their jaws that allow them to pick up uh, vibrations in the water. And uh, they're, they're like little, little drums, essentially. And uh, when, when there's a pressure wave in the water, it actually pushes down on those and it registers back to the brain of these animals that there's something splashing in the water. And what they'll do is they'll sweep their heads side to side and if, uh, if contact is made there or uh, they sense something nearby, it'll turn and smack down on it. That's how, that, that's how they'll secure fish and turtles underwater. The team has prepared a tank with an adult albino gator to test this idea. Right, I'm gonna get the light. MonsterQuest's infrared camera allows Dr. Erickson to watch the blind alligator's reactions 
as he throws food pellets into the tank. So I can see her on the camera here, Kevin, sweeping side to side in the dark. Yeah. Here, I'm going to toss one right at her here. It goes a little deep. Look at that. And that's fairly typical behavior of a, an alligator with no eye problems if it is dark out. And you see here, this animal, as soon as this hits the water, it's going to cue in on where it splashes. Wow. Turn right on it. And this animal's almost blind. Most of these uh, older albinos uh, like this can't see anyway. They lose their eyesight as they get older. Uh, and of course, with the lights out like this, I, I suspect this animal uh, is, is literally blind. We do have quite a bit of experience of alligators living under almost total darkness virtually all the time. And they do quite well in those circumstances. Alligator farms are the perfect example. To make the alligators grow faster, they keep them in constant darkness. An alligator in the wild will only typically grow uh, 6 to 12 inches a year. They got alligator farms growing the alligator 4 to 5 foot in a year. In New York City, the team has uncovered a variety of food sources below ground. Something right there on the right. Oh, mama. That's big papa roach right there. I hate roaches. <laughs> Probably two, three ounces a piece. Yeah, alligator, even large alligators will eat insects, especially that large. Looks like there's plenty of them, too. And the roaches are not alone. Oh, look, there are worms in there. And those earthworms would be a great food source for alligators. So in this sewer system, we're seeing a lot more potential prey for an alligator, for sure. Hungry gators could also rely on the estimated 10 million rats that plague New York City. If you go down to the meat factories, where the blood and everything is coming through the sewers, they got, they got rats down there that are monsters. Alligators, pretty much, they're opportunistic feeders. It could be fluttering at the surface of the water, it could, uh, or it could be just sitting there. They'll eat dead things as well. In fact, they'll eat trash, debris. Um, really, it doesn't matter. While there are evident food sources, there would be other challenges for a gator living under New York City. The borderline of, of, of the waterways that they can go into uh, seem to be dictated by uh, freezing conditions. If you have an environment uh, where the water freezes over, that, uh, that, that seems to be the limit for these animals. Uh, but I don't think these animals could uh, be sustained long term in a, in a New York sewer system. The average winter temperature in New York City is 32 degrees. But underground, it's a whole different world. Most of the time, it's warmer water coming into the sewer system. And then we have Con Edison has steam that dumps their traps. They release steam into the city sewers, which really elevates the uh, temperature. So, you know, it's, it's degree-wise, it's pretty, could be pretty high. You can get, actually get burned. For alligators to survive long term, they would need an environment that can reach 95 degrees Fahrenheit. I'd like to know what the temperature is as well down in here. It'd be really neat. 69%. Wow, 97. They would thrive. They would do very well in conditions like this. And those conditions can be found year-round in the sewers. In the winter, it was the warmest place in the world. And in the summer, it was the coolest place in the world. So it was fairly good to go down into the system. For a gator population to thrive, they would also need to reproduce. Alligator egg incubation is thermoregulated, meaning eggs kept between 86 and 93 degrees would produce both male and female hatchlings. If it's too cold, the hatchlings would be mostly females. I think that the problem with a, a sewer setting for these animals is that they require uh, the laying of eggs uh, up on land. They, they'll build vegetative nests uh, with, with dirt in them, and that's where they'll lay their eggs. Uh, I can't imagine you're going to find, you know, a, a similar situation in a sewer. But Dr. Vliet is more optimistic than his colleague. If there were pairs of animals there in, in, in some sheltered area in a sewer system, they probably could find enough sufficient material to construct a nest and, and produce babies. If two alligators manage to reproduce here, the New York City sewer gator population could explode. Females lay up to 50 eggs each year. 
If only half survived, a population of 4,000 could exist in only three years. If it starts moving, I think that's a positive. Monster Quest has journeyed to New York City to try to find evidence of gators living in its sewers. Dr. Ken Crisco has set up a baiting call transmitter, hoping to lure a sewer gator to a camera trap. While this call doesn't sound very dramatic, it's a gator magnet. The team tested this baiting call in Florida. The instant this gator hears the call, he rushes to it. as do the biggest of alligators. If anything like this monster comes towards Dr. Crisco and his crew, the motion-activated infrared camera will photograph it. There have been alligators found in the New York City sewer system before, but if their food supply is threatened, they could be a big threat to humans they might then start deciding they want to go from eating rats to small dogs to maybe even the occasional homeless person. The mature male alligator has the most powerful jaws of any animal on the planet. This is a 13 and a half foot American alligator. Almost as big as they get. The biggest ones are 14 feet. A really large alligator like this can generate bite forces of about 3,000 pounds. So it's like setting a car on top of those jaws. <laughs> trying to bait me, aren't you? Yeah, you are. <laughs> Dr. Greg Erickson has devised a method to measure the strength of an alligator bite. He will strap down a live alligator to this board and have it bite down on a measuring device. But first, they must catch the alligator. Poke this animal right here. This gator weighs 400 pounds. It will take several people to bring him in. Dr. Erickson's team is trained in handling the gators. Three, With these apex predators, any mistake could be fatal. Dr. Erickson rushes to tie the animal down. Okay, my office is 06, I'm ready. All right, you're on tape. Okay. They sit on the gator and cover its eyes. This will normally calm the animal. All right, it's free. Jenny, you can slide your hand back. Okay. Tapping on the animal's nose makes it open its jaws. Okay. Everybody ready? Here we go. Good bite. Wow. 1643. 1,643 pounds. That's wow. a good bite. This isn't even a... Man, it's only a 10-footer. <laughs> oh, there's a nice clinch. So basically, if you can bench press 1,600 pounds, you could get out of there. You know, this is what these animals do. They, they seize a prey item and uh, they hold on. And what we found is they can hold like this for up to 20 minutes. They'll let off their bite forces to about 200 pounds or so, just enough to keep the teeth sunk in. But if you move in, in, in any extent like that, it'll pump right up there to 1,400 pounds just on that little bite right there. So what they're doing is they're, they're reasserting uh, their control over whatever they've got. Now, this, this animal is bitten into a leather padded bite meter. So it, it probably thinks that it's actually gotten a hold of me, it'd be my guess, because it's, it's a na very natural feeling uh, object that it's bitten into. And uh, so it, it, does, it just doesn't want to let go here. This is part of the way this animal's defending itself. But this is also how these animals prey. They, they'll, they'll bite into, say, a large prey item like a deer. Uh, they'll hold on, they'll try to, try to work the animal into the water where it can drown it. And like I said, they can hold like this for up to 20 minutes. And uh, they can re-register the, almost the full bite force from a dead stop just like this. So we'll try to work this out of here. I bet we'll get another. The prospect of an animal like this on the loose below New York City is a terrifying oh, one. 1,600 pounds right there. It's a one-way street with these animals. I mean, once, once they have, uh, you know, gotten a grip on you, you're, you're basically not getting out unless it decides to let you go. 
The Monster Quest expedition team, led by alligator expert Dr. Ken Crisco, is preparing to explore the New York City sewers. The only real way to know is to go see for yourself. The team will join urban explorer Moses Gates and look for signs of sewer gators. Watch out! Monster Quest has ventured beneath New York City to search for the existence of alligators living in its sewers. Since 1935, when an eight-foot alligator appeared in Harlem, reports of rogue animals roaming the warm and wet sewers have persisted. This man is a herpetologist from Florida searching for alligators in the sewers of New York City. This man is a leading expert on alligators. He believes alligators could easily live and even reproduce inside the New York sewers. This biologist has developed tools to measure alligator bite force. And this man works every day in the New York sewers, but has never seen an alligator. Dr. Ken Crisco was in the New York sewers with urban explorer Moses Gates, looking for signs of sewer gators. Oh yeah, we got some goodies up here. Let's check this out. Looks like slugs. Ooh. Look at all the slugs. And I and they'll eat them up for sure. Look at that. Big slugs here. So they're really all around us. So they there's definitely quite a lot of of animal material for them to eat. The team comes up to a smaller pipe coming from a residential neighborhood. Is that uh active sewage? Oh, yeah. Wow. That is absolutely stuff. This is the same kind of sanitary pipe where swarms of alligators were reported in 1935. At the time, Teddy May was the superintendent of sewers in New York. Teddy was hired by the city to make sewer maps. I think that was his main job. Teddy was Frank's first boss at the Department of Environmental Protection. You could say anything about the guy, but the guy was, he was a hell of a good guy. While May and Disposito never discussed the gator legend, Frank has a theory about it. Well, he didn't want anybody to go down the sewers. He figured there was a lot of prospectors out there looking for the job because these are the nice, easy job. He was intelligent. He knew the system. Cryptozoologist Lauren Coleman believes anyone associated with New York's Department of Environmental Protection is involved in a well-orchestrated cover-up. I would get letters from people that said they used to work for New York City, and they had visited a small, a very closed museum that the Department of Environment kept, in which they put in that museum things they found in the sewers. And one of the things that they have in that museum was supposedly alligators. What's that? What is that that we hear back there? Ooh, that's, that's... Dr. Crisco and his team are inspecting the sewers, looking for gators. There's a lot of debris in here. This is a little bit deeper water here. There's a, an earthworm. The sewers hold many dangers. The biggest thing you have to worry about is you have to make sure it's not raining. Uh, even just a little drizzle, it's not just the little drizzle for where you are, it's the little drizzle for an area of acres. All of it flowing into the drains, flowing through the small drains into the larger drains, and eventually into the trunk drain where you are. So even in a, just a slight, uh, a slight rainstorm, the water level is going to rise quite a bit and the flow is going to be extremely quick. It's going to knock you right off your feet. You can see here actually the, uh, the amount of debris on this ladder shows you just how high the water level can get in here. So it goes right to the top. It's at least a good 10 feet high. I mean, you can see, uh, sit back and see for scale. Uh, it's a good height up, and uh, that debris goes all the way up, which means that at some point, the water's gotten at least that high in here. Amazing. The team searches for several hours and finds more of the same. Lots of potential food sources, relatively clear waters, warmth, and lots of debris that could be used to build gator nests. But there is still a lot of disagreement between experts. I don't believe these animals could live in New York sewers over long term. It's just, uh, it, it's, it's not their, their native realm. Uh, I, I don't think uh, all the requirements that these animals need would be uh, available year round. Well, I've seen them live in a lot worse conditions than this. 
there's always a chance there could be some alligators, but it'd probably be somebody dumping them there, and I don't think they could really exist uh, year-round in, in the sewer system. It's just not their environment. The Monster Quest team has proved there is enough food, water, shelter, and warmth to sustain alligator life. While the camera traps didn't record anything, a few days after the expedition, sewer inspection specialist Pini Alon recorded this video in a sewer just north of Manhattan. It's a salamander. This is an amphibian normally found in wetlands, not in large city sewers. It's shocking to me how many alligators and other crocodilians show up in places they aren't supposed to be. We find evidence of alligators in maybe 25 states in the United States where they're not supposed to be, including quite northern states. I think alligators can do quite well up here in New York, um, just as they would any other place. Uh, their feeding behavior allows them to adapt to many different types of environmental conditions. If the urban myth is not taken seriously, you have the potential of alligators becoming substantial populations in some urban areas actually coming out of the sewers at some